Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I made my first set of cards using the October 2022 sheet load. I hope you'll stick around, see the process, and get a few tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Yesterday, I shared a look at the new sheet load of cards, October, 2022. In that video, I told you how you could download the free printable and I shared a look at my first set. Well, today I'm here to show you how I made that set and don't forget that my team of collaborators will also be joining me in sharing their creations for the month. I have collaborators here on YouTube and over on Instagram. Everybody is linked in the description box below, but to find the videos easily here on YouTube, click on the hashtag in the title. And over on Instagram, I have a direct link to the hashtag in the description box. I know that they would love for you to stop by, see what they created and leave them some love. The October 2022 sheet load shows you how to make nine A2 cards using just three pieces of six by six pattern paper and some cardstock. And the great thing is there are no pattern paper scraps left over. As I get into the process, I will tell you about the products and tools I'm going to use. If you want to hear more details about my products, you can check out yesterday's debut video and I go over them a little bit more. Now, if I do leave you with any questions that aren't answered in the voiceover, as always, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I'm going to get started today by cutting my three pieces of pattern paper per the cutting guides. Now, as always, if your pattern paper does have a direction, you'll want to make sure you know that before you make the first cut. For me, the first cut will be at four and a half inches, and then I'm going to rotate that piece and cut three pieces that are one inch. Now, I am using the one inch mark to the left of my cutting line, just so it's easier to just slide it instead of having to move it each time. Once those three strips are done, the remaining part I cut into three pieces that are one and a half inches tall. And that bottom piece gets cut into three pieces that are two inches wide. Now, one thing to keep in mind for this month is there are no scraps left over. So that means you have to make the most of your paper. I made sure while I was cutting my pattern papers that I didn't do what I call a generous cut, which is cutting it just a little bit over the dimension you need. You will want to make sure you end up with even sized pieces, so I cut it right at the measurement. Next, I brought in three pieces of turquoise cardstock, and these will end up being my pattern paper mats. Now, something I do want to point out are kind of the special dimensions, and I do make note on the printable. Normally, I do try to stick to quarter inch increments, but this month we do have some eighth inch increments. So as you're cutting, make sure to keep that in mind. The first cut I'm gonna make on the cardstock is to cut four and three quarters inches off the long edge. Then the piece that is left over at the bottom gets cut to one and three quarters inches tall. Now we're gonna cut the four and three quarter inch tall piece into three three and three eighths inch pieces. On your trimmer, the three eighth inch mark is halfway between the three and a quarter and three and a half. You will get three pieces of this size out of each sheet. Next, we're going to take the one and three quarter inch tall strip and cut it into three pieces that are three and one eighth inches wide. The one eighth inch mark is halfway between the three and the three and a quarter. And once again, you're going to get three of these from each piece of cardstock. The remaining two pieces of cardstock get cut in the exact same way. 
Now it's time to cut the CS2 pieces, which are two inch squares for your image and or sentiment. Now the printable does call for a full sheet, but this is a great one to use scraps on. So I just brought in some of my white scraps and I cut two inch squares until I had nine total. This month's supply list calls for five pieces of cardstock to yield nine card bases. Well, with five pieces, you will have one left over for later. Now, since some of you might be new to card making, I will show you how I make my card bases for this. I start by cutting my cardstock in half at four and a quarter inches wide. For now, you could either go ahead and fold it by hand, or you'll see here, I'm gonna bring in my score buddy and do a score line before I fold them. This step is not necessary. I have just begun to prefer the look of a scored and folded card base because I was getting some cracking of my cardstock when I would do it by hand. You can do whatever method and use whatever tools you have on hand. The next step for me was to put together pattern paper B with cardstock one piece B, and these will get matted together. Now, one thing you'll want to note here is that there will be borders on the top, bottom, and left of the pattern paper. This piece does get aligned with the right edge of the cardstock. Just try to get a nice even border all the way around and align the right edges. If you find yourself having trouble lining up those right edges, you could bring in a tool like a Misty or a trimmer, anything with kind of a little lip or edge on it, and line the pieces up against that as you're adhering them together. Now we're gonna put together the card kits for each card, and these are just the pieces that will eventually go onto a single card base. I like to lay out all of my pieces in front of me, arranged by size and pattern. Then I go through and I grab the three pieces for each card and lay it on top of the blue cardstock mat. That is just so later it's easier to see which pieces are where they are separated. Now you can make yours look slightly different. You know, the first time you'll see here, the middle and the bottom pieces are different. And for that third one, you can choose either the first or the second arrangement. You just have to make sure you keep it the same all the way through all of the pieces. Before we can put the cards together, we do need some sentiments, so that's what I'm going to work on next. For my sentiment today, I'm using the Craftiness is Happiness stamp set from Tailored Expressions. Now unfortunately, this is no longer available, but use whatever you have in your stash to do your sentiments or your image on this piece. I am going to be doing some that say Craftiness is Happiness and some that say Crafter's Gonna Craft. I will later as well use the little splotchy stamps for a little added decoration on each square. Now because I am using the Misty, it's easy to set up my card stocks in opposite corners along with each of the sentiment stamps, and then I can ink them up and stamp them, just making sure each time that my card stock is all the way in the corner before I do the stamping. Once I had all of the sentiments stamped, I then got out the two splatter stamps and I set those up on one of the square pieces. Now because the right side of the splatter hangs off the edge a little bit, I did go ahead and line my square up with the four inch mark on the ruler. That way just each time before I stamp, I'll make sure the left edge is at that mark and then I know that my stamps will be in the same place each time. For the splatters, I did use the pink ink, and just like with the sentiments, I kept stamping until all nine pieces were done. Before I put my Misty away, I do have a little more stamping to do, and that's going to be the paintbrush from the Not Too Shabby set, and I will be stamping it with Memento Tuxedo Black ink onto a piece of alcohol-friendly cardstock. 
Now I will need a lot of these for the cards and I did decide to stamp a couple extra just in case once I colored them something happened in my brother's scan and cut when I went to cut them out. So you'll see here I just set the stamp up once and then I would move my cardstock up and down to stamp the remaining ones. And because this paper was wide enough I could as flip it around as well. I will be coloring the paint brushes with some Spectrum Noir Tri-Blend markers. I will list the individual colors in the description box below if you are interested. Now if you've been around my channel long, you know that I like simple coloring. So I just go like the marker says to do light, dark, medium, and then light again. For this first brush, I just want to show you how I use the markers. And then for the remaining brushes, I do more of an assembly line process where I will color in maybe four of the handles with the dark gray and then come back and, you know, color in the little silver neck until I have all of those completed. While I continue to color, I wanted to do a little shout out. I had some channel members hit one year of membership in September, so I wanted to take a minute to recognize them. Up on screen now is a list of names. Each of these people has supported me financially over the past year. Thank you so much for your continued support. I wouldn't be here without you. After I had all of those colored, I took this sheet over to my brother's scan and cut and had it cut them all out. I just love these cute little paint brushes. Now all of the pieces were ready, so I assembled the cards. To do this, the tall skinny strip got placed to the left side of the blue mat. I did try to get a nice even border on the top, left, and bottom, and it's about an eighth of an inch all the way around. Then I took the smaller piece of pattern paper and that went on the bottom right of the same blue cardstock. And finally on that piece I adhered the sediment and that goes in the top right. Once again I'm just trying to keep even borders all the way around the outside. Now you'll notice here there is a gap between the two pieces but later that will be covered up with that horizontal piece. The matted piece gets put in the center of the card and then the little piece that covers up that gap goes right on the card front but it gets aligned to the right edge of the card. You can move this matted piece up or down depending on how large your image or sentiment is on that piece. I just continued in assembly line fashion to put the rest of the cards together. Once all of those pieces were on the card front, I then did a little extra decorating on the front and the inside. Now unfortunately I had three sections of video that were blurry like this one, so I won't make you watch them all, but basically I put the paintbrush on the front with art glitter glue, and then while that was drying I did a little stamp off and stamp on with a different image from the stamp set for the inside piece of the card. And finally I added some shine to the tip of the paintbrushes with glossy accents. And here are some close-up looks at the finished set. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together my first set of cards using the October 2022 sheet load. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. If you haven't yet downloaded the new printable, make sure to check out yesterday's debut video, which is linked in the description box below. And now you can click on the hashtag in the title or the links in the description box to see what my awesome collaboration team has created. Until the next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. 
I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.